Hey guys, welcome to episode 6 of Making an Online Pokemon Game in Game Maker Studio 2. And that is a very long intro now that I think about it, um, but I'm getting pretty good at it. So, for this video we're going to be doing with player movement, which is pretty simple. Um, that's why I have this little player icon here. Uh, I just drew this off camera. Um, well, actually I didn't draw it. Uh, what I did was I went into paint and I used their, uh, what's it called? their code create so basically AI generated um, just because we're not gonna be doing anything fancy this is just for a simple player for now just so we can get some movement going um, and I believe I said I was also going to work on fixing some stuff here um, I have all that done what was I gonna fix uh, oh yeah the servers needs to remove oh no we already did that okay um, I guess we're just gonna be dealing with player movement this time um, I was going to say we need to disconnect the client, but I think we already did that last time. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Uh, there are two main methods that we could use to deal with movement. Um, we can either have it controlled by the client or by the server. In general, things that are controlled by the client, you don't want to trust because uh, you could have notorious hackers or people who are like cheating the system and they could exploit it to make it... Um, say one thing when it's not. So if it's controlled by the client, the client could essentially say, oh, I'm in this position, well in the next frame I'm actually a thousand pixels away, and the server's just like, okay, I guess you're over here now, um, and then it'll broadcast that to everybody, and everybody will be like, oh, I guess you're way over there now for some reason, which is how you get people who like um, can easily hack um, the system, like, you know, um, I don't know, like cheating the system basically. So if we control it with the server, uh, the client has no control over what the server does, but they do have control over what the client does, obviously. So we are going to be doing things on the server side instead of the client side, even though doing it on the client is a lot easier and makes more sense. Um, this thing I struggled with is like, do I want to do what makes more sense and what's easier for you guys, or do I want to do what's proper and better for the game itself? And I figured um, if you're watching this tutorial, you're at least somewhat competent, so we will be doing this in the more proper way. The way you would probably do this, hopefully in a real game. So we are going to be doing this on the server side, which make the movement look a little weird. Like, it'll be movement code that you're not used to, not normal, but it should be fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this object ne network controller and I'm going to move it into the network folder just so the object is mixed in with all the networking stuff. And then I'm going to create a new group for the player. This is going to be all of our player stuff. And um, yeah, so I'll create a new script in here. And we're going to call this the player data. And this will be our first non-singleton object. So we'll make a constructor. And in here. Um, this is just going to control the data for any individual player. Sorry, I had to cough again. Um, still getting over the cold, even though it's been a few days now. Um, I still have a cough for some reason. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. Um, anyway, so what do we need here? Um, so this will control each individual player. So we should probably provide an ID, which will be the socket ID, um, and then an X and a Y position. And then we should store this. So I'm just going to say, instead of um, storing it as a socket ID like this, I'll just call it ID and we'll set that equal to socket ID. Um, capitalize that. And for the position, I'm actually just going to store this in what's known as a vector. So we'll do x, x, y, y, um, just like that. And I'm not sure if GameMaker allows this, but I think because they have the exact same name, I think you can just do X comma Y. And I think that works, but I could be wrong. That might be a different language that does that. I always forget. Um, I suppose we'll try it because it's not giving me any errors. Um, so maybe it just works. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, we should also have a function to draw the player. So I will do, we'll call it render, and it's gonna be a function. And we just need to draw the player sprite and um, make sure your player sprite is centered, middle center, I already did that, but yeah, make sure it's centered, I guess. 
Um, anyway, what was I saying? Um, yep, so let's draw this player sprite at the location, which is pretty easy. Um, I'm going to do draw sprites, and we're going to do ext because I want to make this colored um, based on the ID. So I'm going to do draw sprite ext. So what does this take? The sprite, s player, the sub image, there's only one image, um, one frame. Uh, the position will be position.x, position.y. The scale will just be 1, 1 for now, rotation 0, and the color, uh, we'll make this a variable, and I'll define that in a second, so C, and the alpha is just 1. So what is color? Um, we need to define that, so uh, let's make some colors. We'll make an array of colors, I guess, and let's just, ooh, that's not what I wanted. Let's see, so let's do C, um, what colors should we do? We could do lime, C maroon, uh, C navy sounds good, and instead of lime, let's do let's do I saw a better one olive. I don't know what these look like to be honest. Oh, you can hover over it and see. Oh, that's neat. I didn't know that. Um, all right, so we'll define var C equal to colors, and we'll just define it based on the ID. So we'll do ID modulus, which is the per uh, the the percent sign. So ID mod um, colors dot length, and instead of doing the percent sign, you could also just type in the word mod. Both work the exact same. So ID mod the length. I prefer the dollar sign because. Um, I kind of, well, not the dollar sign, the percent sign, because that's usually what languages do. They use that. But the nice thing is that you have mod, and then GameMaker also has div, um, which works in kind of the opposite way of modulus. But for now, we're just going to be using mod. So ID, mod, the length. Um, this will basically make it so that if we go beyond the length of the array, it will cycle back through and go to the beginning. So we don't have to worry about any overflow. So if we have more than three players, uh, it won't give us a out of bounds error. Anyway, that's all we really have to do here for that render function. And now let's create an object or a script, I guess, called player, uh, we'll call it manager. Oh no, controller. And this will be a singleton. Um, so this is gonna manage all the players in the game. Um, so I'll do it the same way I always do it, macro um, player controller, and this is going to be underscore get player controller. And then for this, let's make this just underscore player controller, make it a constructor. And then we'll write that function for getting it. So function get player controller controller. And this will have a static, uh, we'll just call it PC for player controller, equals a new underscore player controller, and then we'll return PC. And there we go, there's our singleton class working. So this should have an array of all the players. So we'll say players equals array create, and the length of this should be however many players we can have. So that is a network dot max clients and we'll default everything to no one. So basically empty. And then we need to, we'll create a function for making a player. So make player equals a function. And this again needs the uh, socket ID and the X and Y position. So this will just create the player. So var P equals a uh, player or sorry, new player data. I think my phone just vibrated, but I don't know it's that. Um, anyway, new player data. We'll pass in the socket ID and the X and the Y position. Uh, we need to store this player inside of this array. So wherever the socket ID is. So we'll say players socket ID equals that new player. And we can return P, I don't think we need to. I'm not sure of any case where we'll need to actually get the player back, but just in case, eh, yeah, we probably will. So we'll just return it. Um, we'll need a render all players equals a function. This doesn't need any arguments. So this is going to iterate through all the players and just call that render function. 
Um, so I'm going to do a for var i equals zero. I is less than network dot max clients and i plus plus. And then I'm going to, so we need to skip any point where this isn't a player. So even though we're iterating through all of them, we're going to skip the ones that don't exist. So I'm going to do players, um, sorry, if players i equals no one, we'll just continue, which will um, skip this iteration. So it'll continue on to the next one. Don't accidentally do break or return. While they are similar, they all three do different things. Uh, break will actually exit the for loop altogether. Return will exit the entire function, but continue will just skip out of this single iteration of the loop. So instead of leaving the for loop, it'll just go on to another i plus one or i plus plus. So that's what we want. We just want to skip over this iteration. Um, otherwise, we'll do players i dot render because um, the reason we have to skip over it, by the way, is because if it's no one, we would be trying to call no one dot render, which isn't a function. There's no you can't render nothing. Basically, there's no function in there, so that would give us an error. So this will just prevent us from having an error. Another way you could have written this is um, if players i doesn't equal no one, then we could do this line of code. This would have worked too. And if you wanted to, you could have added braces to say, hey, if this is not no one, then render it. That would have worked as well. Um, this style works better for me. I like it. Um, I don't remember the exact name for this style of coding, um, but it's basically you break out before you handle the exceptions before at the very start rather than putting them at the bottom. So this way, if I need to add more lines of code, I don't have to do a whole bunch of like indenting um, and it looks a little cleaner to me. So anyway, um, with that ramble out of the way, uh, that should be everything we need there. If I come back to the network controller here, um, I'm going to in the draw, not the draw GUI event, but we're going to add event, uh, draw. Yep. The draw event. All I'm going to do here is um, player controller dot render all players in the draw event. So that should be fine. Um, and actually, it's not fine. I need to say if is client um, because we don't want to, and I can put this on the same line if I want. We only want to render all the players if we're the client. We don't want the server to also render the players. No point in that. So we'll just leave it like this. And that's almost everything in the server. Now we should actually start creating some players and in the client. Um, one sec. Gosh, this cough is really bad. Um, so yeah, so in the connect part here, the server needs to also keep track of players. So that's why I'm going to have the server also create players. And the server needs to keep track of them because, again, the server is going to control the player's movement, but the client will render the player themselves. So both of them need to keep track of an array of, of players. So both the server and the client needs a player controller. So under here, um, in the servers on async event, um, what do we need to do? Well, here we are. We create. Uh, find the socket, make sure that it's available, and then we are um, saving that socket and sending it back to the client who uh, needs it. So we're telling the player, hey, this is your socket. So we need to add a little bit more here. So here we need to actually create it. So we can just do player controller dot make player. And this needs an ID, which I will um, just give it the variable ID. And then it needs an X and a Y position. Um, we'll just do randomize, sorry, random times 50 and random times, well, we'll do 500, I guess. So it'll just be a random position. And then we need to store this in a variable. So var P equals this player. 
So I guess it is a good thing that we had this return the player um, because now we need to come into here and write um, the the x and y position of that new player. So I will say another, we'll keep these at buffer u16s. Um, and actually no, we'll do assigned u16 because yeah, that'll be better. In fact, should we do a u30 or assign 32? If I control middle mouse click this, let me look here. Do you guys think our position is going to go beyond um, this value here, actually this value here? So this is our assigned 16. So do we think our x position will ever exceed 32,000? Um, it's possible, unlikely, but possible. Um, if we do a 32 bit for the x and y position, we'll never have to worry about it. Um, so yeah, we'll just, we'll do a 32, I guess. So sign 32, sign 32, that should be fine. It won't be that much more extra data. Uh, so we'll just leave it there for 32. And that'll give us the X and Y position. We'll actually we need to actually say P dot position dot X and P dot position dot Y. So now we are sending the player, not only the ID, but the X and Y position of the player that is being created. And I don't think I need anything else. Um, I think everything should be fine here. Um, I want to check something in the start event, the network start. I just want to make sure, yeah, so we are providing the client ID there, which is fine. Um, in fact, that being said, um, no, yeah, that's, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so now under the player, the client here, we need to, when we get the ID, we are also receiving a um, X and a Y position. So we have var underscore X equals network dot read a buffer. And we're setting this to assign 32. So we'll read the 32 position and I'm gonna copy and paste this because now we need the Y position. So we read the ID, we read the X position, we read the Y position. Um, I don't need any of this. We don't need to send anything to the server anymore. I don't need to log any. Well, I can log it still, I guess. Um, we set our ID, and now we just need to create the player. So player dot or player manager, player controller. We need it. Dot make player, and here we're just going to set it to the ID, the X, and the Y position. So when the client receives an ID. We read the ID, the X, and the Y position of the player that is being created, and then it is um, making that player. Everything should be good now. Um, yeah, let's run this and see if we see anything or if we get errors. We'll probably get errors, but worth a shot. Um, am I already getting errors, actually? Is that what this is? Uh, compile errors. Um, random. Random one. Will that work? I thought you could just do random and just have it be from zero to one, but apparently not. Um, there's that. And now if I come into my AB testing and I run the client, okay, we get an error. Um, argument is an array colors. Um, yeah, that should be correct. What is your issue? Um, let's find out under the, this is under player controllers render. No, the player data render. Uh, it is saying something is wrong here. So colors, length, argument is array. Um, yeah, so it's saying this is wrong. That's strange. Um, colors dot length works, right, guys? Like I'm not crazy. Is that how Game Maker works? Um, maybe not. Maybe you still have to do array length. That's strange if that's the case, because I swear they made it so that you could just do colors.length. But I could be wrong. Now apparently I was wrong, because um, that worked. Um, yeah, so I guess you still have to do array length. Uh, it's very tiny. He's a very small boy. Uh, we'll make him a little bigger in a second here. Um, but for now, at least he's rendering. If I make another one now, though, um, it's at a different position. And it has the second color, which is red. And if I make a third one, it should be blue. 
which he is. I don't know if you guys can even see that, but yep, so we got a green guy, red guy, and a blue guy. The next one will also be green because it's iterating back through. Um, but next, we need to tell all the other clients, hey, this is where I am, because right now you can only see yourself. You can't see anybody else. So that's a bug we'll need to fix. Um, but do I want to save that for next time or not? Um, probably next time we'll fix that. Um, that's a pretty easy thing to do. But I want to check something quick. So if we come into the documentation for array length, so there's no way here, I guess, to do that, I guess. Um, doesn't say anything about it. So my question is, what does dot length do? Uh, can I open this? Does it open a documentation? It doesn't. So if any of you know what uh, just dot length is for, I'd love to know. Unless length is just a, no, length is not a built-in variable. So yeah, I guess I'll try to look it up in between. But anyway, next time we're going to be doing with what I just said, which is making it so that every player can see every other player. So until next time, guys, I'll see you later.